It's a great day in SimWorld, everybody. Good morning and welcome to SimWorld Today. I'm v Ron. Alongside me is Rick Blaze. Good morning, man. Happy Friday. How you doing? Good morning, b Ron. We're back in this thing on a freaky Friday, a beautiful Friday. Let's go. Yeah, man. Yeah, let's jump right into it, shall we? Your uh, Houston Rockets, man, they are looking really good. They're hot. They won their seventh in a row last night. Beating the Bulls 127 to 117. And Jalen Green had a big part to play in that. He scored 26 points in that game in the win. Uh the the win, the win again, like I said, they're seventh in a row. They are in eleventh place in the West. Uh question is, can they catch Golden State and make the playoffs? I mean, they got to the play in and is they got the tiebreaker against LA Lakers, but they do not have the tiebreaker against Golden State. So they have to actually jump Golden State to get in. Um, Jalen Green's been doing this thing though, and I thought about it, man, he's been on a real good run as of late. And I thought about it, that man got to feed his family. He got a baby on the way, you know, he did, him and Dre Michelle got busy in the Burger King bathroom. And he got a baby on the way. He got to feed his family. He's been going off. He's trying not to get cut or traded. So he's been doing his thing. Can the Rockets catch Golden State? It's possible, I guess. They've been hot right now. They've been on the heater. Um, they do they do miss Sengun. You have the big fella was playing awesome as well. Um, so they're able to make they're making changes on the fly as far as how their playing style is. And Jalen Green's been um showing up and showing out uh, as of late for them. For sure. Yeah, and that's a really good sign. Again, they're, they're, and what makes them better is they're 9-1 and one in March. Uh, so Again, seven, they're 7-1 seven, 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 in a row. They're 9-1 and one in March, and they are just two and a half games uh, behind Golden State uh, for that final play-in spot in the, in, in the West. Uh, the other good thing is that this is a little bit of history for the Rockets. This is their first, uh, their longest winning streak since uh, two years ago, 20, 20, 2021, three years ago now, whatever, Matt, Matt Hartman, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I <believe> yeah. <laughs> I, so I say it is B-Run. Uh, the question was asked on yesterday uh, in the threads. If Udoka comes back and leads his team uh, over the Golden State Warriors, does that make him a better coach than Steve Kerr? <laughs> 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 Oh man, that's mm. you're you're you're, yeah. you're you're digging this morning, Rick. I see I'm stirring it. it, babe. I'm stirring the pot stirring early the pot, this right? Friday morning. <laughs> I'm stirring the pot this Friday morning. Steve Kerr is probably, in my opinion, the twelfth best coach in LA right now. <laughs> there, there's that's a lot of competition up, up there for in LA for coaches, yeah. But you know the the Rockets they they led 84 75, 75 with six six minutes left in the third quarter, uh, and then you know. DeMar DeRozan uh, got got got, uh, got a foul called on him, which led to a whole on-court thing. Luckily, it didn't impact things too much. As you know, sometimes those things can work against you when those things happen. Um, so, uh, but him and Mendel Brooks got ejected uh, because of that whole thing. Too. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Dylan so, Brooks did his job. He took their best player out of the game. We can win without Dylan Brooks. Chicago can't win without DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> so that's that's the villain playing the villain's role perfectly. Let's get out the game so my boys can get a dub. Great job, Dylan Brooks. He's been playing pretty good since he got to Houston, too. I was really worried about him coming, him and his antics coming to Houston. But, again, he's one of those players, kind of like a Draymond Green type. You love him when he's on your team. You hate him when he's not. It's just one of those things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, I, I'm I'm really really glad the Rockets are, are looking good right now. You know they're like they're trying to get to that final play in spot, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, looking at standings really quick, uh, Thunder are in first, Nuggets are in second, Timberwolves are in third, Clippers in fourth, Pelicans in fifth, Mavs at six, Suns seven, Kings eight, and then nine, ten, eleven, Lakers, Warriors, Rockets. So yeah. they're they're right there, just yeah, not a, yeah. And we're gonna, a little bit more. and I'm sure they're gonna play each other again, uh, very soon coming up, right? So, uh, let's, uh, let's they're gonna be able to define their future themselves about that. I like the Rockets' chances. Um, the Lakers are 
the biggest up and down team. They're probably more down than up, actually. Uh, Golden State with their talent has a chance all the time. But I like the Rockets' chances against the Lakers and against Golden State as far as catching them. I don't know the strength of schedules between those three teams, but they're playing really good right now. I'm sure the Rockets don't want the month of March to end, but they're going to keep it rolling in April, uh, the birth, the month of the true players in April. Yeah. So uh, right. <laughs> good luck to them. I think they can make some noise. I think they'd have a legit shot to get into this play-in. Uh, situation. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it all goes. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. There are some possible uh, rule changes coming to the SWFL going forward. Uh, the uh, that there's talk of changing the the kickoff uh, the kickoff change. Um, and then there is also there's also. Uh, more more talk around so the uh, prohibiting of the hip drop tackle which which on, you know on Wednesday there was opposition to it but yesterday was was uh, updated that the owners are now backing they're continuing to back that change and the change to that is going to result in possibly a 15 yard penalty uh, if if for that for that specific hip, hip drop uh, tackle change. Um, any thoughts on all of this in terms of both the kickoff change and the hip drop uh, tackle change that could be coming down the pipe? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm trying to... exciting in the, NFL, in the SWFL. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's. I mean, I put my hand up on my hip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. We just doing a little dip dance on the football field. I don't understand what the problem is. Now, nah, in all seriousness, the hip tackle has been one of those things, again, that um, as a defensive player, it's very hard in today's game to figure out what the hell I should be doing when I tackle a guy. I'm 100, 195 pounds. I'm going against a guy that's 225 pounds. Ooh, how am I supposed to tackle him again? I can't tackle him too low. I can't tackle him a certain kind of way. I, as a defensive guy, I think it's just very difficult to figure out. You, your job is to get tackles. You can't keep your job if you don't tackle guys. And so since there's so many rules on how you can and can't tackle guy, guys coming up with new innovations on how they got to get these guys down because that's their job. Uh, I don't know if the hip, ta- the hip tackle – guys have been getting hurt with the hip tackle, so I, I understand that. But as far as the, so they got to figure something out. As far as the kickoffs are concerned – Bring the kickoffs back. Again, shout out to the Devin Hester. Shout out to the Dante Hall. Shout out to all the great kick returners. Uh, half a tank, J.J. Moses, what we used to call him in Houston. Um, kickoff returns is a special, special, special thing. And it's an exciting play in football. I'm glad. I want to see the, the kickoff return back. I'm tired of seeing this. Yeah, Let's so just do that the, when they're the, the ball just going to the yeah. end zone. Like, no one's – ever. Yeah. it's never a kick return. Uh, I, I want to see the kickoff return comes back. So I hope they, those changes happen so we can get some kickoff returns back and get some excitement on the kickoffs again. Yeah, the change to the kickoff, the kickoffs would be the kicker was still lining up, line up at the 35-yard uh, line, but the other the other players on the kickoff team would, move, would line up at the receiving team's 40-yard mm-hmm. line, and then there would be like you know a, a little setup zone between 35 and 30 for the returning team to be in. Yeah. Uh, so it it sounds like it sounds like um they're they do it there and they're getting rid of fair catches for for kickoffs too, which is interesting to me. Um, but now that's that interesting. So rare. Yeah, now that sounds so interesting. They get rid of fair catches. Yes, touchback and touchbacks would go to the, would go to the thirty five yard line to the twenty five. Oh wow! Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. we'll see. Look, this NFL yeah, we're gonna be we'll watching see. no matter what. It is what it exactly. is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, look, let's get into some sim world prep topics, shall we? Beasts of the East played the Indy Stripes, and they, they were they were looking pretty good over the last couple of games, you know, since the changes. Dylan Harper, Coach Jack Shiragani, no longer on the team, but it didn't matter because they won their last two in a row. But the Beasts of the East snapped that win streak last night, winning 67 <laughs> to 60. And Levin Cutler had a really good game in that one. Uh, but I want to want to ask you about Indy. Even they only lost by seven points in this game. The Beast of the East, and we know how good Beast of the East are. Is this is this is during this little win streak for Indy that they had, and this loss it too? Does all of this kind of prove that they can hang with the with, with the 
top one with the top teams. In Sim War Prep 4, is this more of a situation where they're, uh, it's out of the moment thing, if that makes sense? You know, I think maybe it's a combination of both. Uh, I think that these players are now given an opportunity that they wasn't receiving uh, with Coach Shira Gone. Shira now gone. Um, so the Dylan Harper things also frees up the other players. You know, guys can play. You got people forget this is the number one prep league in the world. Yeah. Everybody on the team can actually play and actually pretty good. Now, there are tears to everything, but when you give guys an opportunity that was sitting on the bench and they don't have to worry about coming out in two minutes because Dylan Harper's coming back in or not playing at all because the coach is not going to put him in the game, when they can know they're going to play, they know they're going to have a free range to do their thing and it's not going to be a, a, a quick uh, rope that they're going to be pulled from. You get the best version of players, and they're going to give you their max effort. So Indy's one of those teams now where they're going to be one of those those grinded-out teams, and they're going to give you their max effort. If you're not ready to play, Indy has showed they can beat you because on in, in sim real prep, anybody can beat anybody on any given day and night. So I like what they're doing. Beast of the East are, you know, they're, they're very well coached, so they're going to stick to what they know best. And um, they ground out the win, 67, seven, 67 to 60. But shout out to the Indy Strikes, man. Shout out to the whole squad for Indy Strikes, man. They playing really, really good as a team, and that's what counts. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They're doing really good as a team right now, and I, I do, I do think that I do think that uh, the the win streak and the loss that they had, I think it does kind of show that hey, you know, just because we don't have Dylan Harper anymore, that doesn't really matter. We're a bunch of kids who really want to play, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play hard, and that's what matters and at the most in the grand scheme of things but continuing with our with a similar prep let's get that let's get out of here though on a round of recaps shall we we're going to start by talking about lone star, the early game yesterday lone star and apex mm-hmm. lone star they made the trip over to japan and it was a success a won their third in a row this time uh you know coming back to beat apex 73 to 65 uh, Coach Atkins has this team clicking right now. The third in a row. Hey, you know, yeah. And you think speaking of clicking and not clicking, bad boys versus my guys, the H Town Hoopers, and you know, H Town did what they did not. Sometimes they look good, and other times they look terrible. This is one of those other times, terrible. They got the brakes beat off of them, proper. By bad boys, for sure. Yeah, and you know, Yacht Club, they got a huge game from both Xavier Pope and Darius McBride. And they beat Run DMV 78 to 59. Both Pope and McBride had 19 points in in the win. Both of them wrote the game for them. And yeah, we talked about it. Uh and here we see we got Bay Area Breakers versus Sim World Europe. You see it now, highlights. Dunks a lot. Duh. Breakers. Yes, yeah, similar year Europe actually ended up uh, winning that I'm game. I'm sorry, Europe with the duck. Um, Europe, yep. forgive me. I, I, I can't. I got to be invited back to the UK. My bad, Europe. That's on me, that's on me, player. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. Well, look, thank you all for joining us here on Sim World today. We really appreciate you. Another week in the books. We'll see you next week on Monday. But remember, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you can know when all of our shows, streams, games, and everything else we have here on Simbro TV go live. And hit the button as well so you can get notified when those things happen. For Rick, I'm b Ron. Simbro is the only place where you can see the game, be the game. We'll see you on Monday. Presentation of Symbol.